Jeffrey Jackson did not do himself well at all in the October 2020 JW broadcasting. First, he paraded his lack of spiritual insight by suggesting that one of the biggest concerns of Jesus on his agonizing night of prayer in the garden was that he was about to be falsely accused of blasphemy against Jehovah's name. That was embarrassing, to say the least, for one claiming to be a spiritual leader looking like such a spiritual dunce. He presented a short video that was also embarrassing because while Jehovah's Witnesses will believe it is a video about prayer. I've always prayed to Jehovah when making decisions. Many saw through the mind control, the motive of keeping Jehovah's Witnesses controlled and loyal to the organization. One may say, well, mission accomplished. Jackson's target audience, after all, is Jehovah's Witnesses. So that's all the success he cares about. That's not true. They very much care about the activists, such as myself and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, who are growing in numbers and who are having increasing success in helping Jehovah's Witnesses to wake up to reality. The governing body is indeed concerned about Jehovah's Witnesses learning the truth about the truth, which is exactly the reason the organization's trust to keep Jehovah's Witnesses loyal has taken on such increased intensity. They are on the back foot. Jackson embarrassed himself and the governing body once again by showcasing their hypocrisy in the music video about forgiveness. How on earth can the organization that once chastised the Catholic Church for using disfellowshipping as a weapon, a weapon, to be so absolutely hypocritical that it has gone one up on the Catholics by adopting not only disfellowshipping, but adding shunning as their weapon, teaching mothers and fathers not to even take telephone calls from their children? their disfellowshipped children. And must it not ring hollow when they preach forgiveness? The two cannot go hand in hand. Forgiveness and shunning, no way. The moment you truly forgive someone, you cannot shun them. Or that is not forgiveness at all. In the next video, I will be commenting on two more short videos presented by The Denial of God's only channel. Uh, that I think would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. Which brings me to what this video is about. Jackson, no doubt, was tempted to repeat the often repeated lie that the governing body appointed by Jesus in 1919 when there was no governing body, is God's only channel of communication today. But whether it was out of fear of the penalty of perjury, being under oath... Thank you. Mr. Jackson, you need to be sworn. You yes, a, Your Honour. you have a Bible there? I certainly do. Would you take the Bible in your hand, please, and repeat after me? I swear by Almighty God... I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give in this Royal Commission that the evidence I shall give in this Royal Commission shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth Yes, thank you. Take a seat again, please. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Stewart. As your honour pleases. Or whether it was a rare desire for once to speak the truth about the matter, Jackson told the truth. It would indeed be presumptuous to say that they are the only channel that God is using. The sad thing, however, is that in speaking the truth, Jackson was lying.
How about that? The man seems incapable of speaking the truth without lying. Because while it is true that it would be presumptuous for him to say, that is what they actually teach, what they believe, what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. So in a sense, he was lying by answering the question as if to say, no, we do not teach that. From where did you get that idea? Not only is it false, it would be quite presumptuous. It's amazing that you could think that we could ever entertain such a thought. That is what it really is. Such a liar. What if Jeffrey Jackson had learned the very lesson that he was trying to teach Jehovah's Witnesses in the October broadcast? To pray as Jesus did. And resist temptation as Jesus did. One example occurred in 32 CE, about two and a half years after the initial temptations. Please turn to John chapter 6 and verse 15. Then Jesus, knowing they were about to come and seize him to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain all alone. This seems like a similar temptation to what Jesus had already faced. But this time, the setting was different. Satan didn't directly offer the kingship to Jesus. There was no demand for Jesus to worship the devil. Rather, those following Jesus wanted to make him their king. This temptation was going to be by popular demand. How did Jesus react? Well, even before they could make their move, Jesus withdrew from them to a mountain just by himself. And what did he do on the mountain? We find the answer in a detail added in the parallel account recorded by Matthew. Let's read it together. It's Matthew 14 and verse 23. After sending the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Yes, Jesus went there, not just to avoid the crowds, but to pray. The third question, what lesson can we learn from Jesus' example? There is not one thing that was created that was not created by Jesus, or, as Jehovah's Witnesses prefer to put it, by means of him. So the one who is co-author of life, and everything, including heaven and earth, and the angels resisted the temptation to be crowned as king. The Creator did not seek that honor, even resisted the temptation to accept that honor, which Jackson implied was a huge temptation. The power and the prestige got to Jackson. So he joined the diabolical scheme to deceive people into thinking that he and the other men on the governing body were appointed by Jesus in 1919 and that they should be trusted like Jehovah and Jesus are trusted. At Matthew 24, 45 to 47, we read that for the time of the end, Jesus would appoint a faithful and discreet slave or governing body to explain the Bible to his followers and help them to grow in understanding of the truth. So, whom do you trust? You fully trust in Jehovah, Jesus, and the faithful slave. Since Jehovah God and Jesus Christ completely trust the faithful and discreet slave, should we not do the same? Had Jeffrey Jackson prayed and resisted that temptation, Many Jehovah's Witnesses would awake from their slumber, like when Raymond Franz prayed and resisted the temptation to perpetuate that lie. He chose, finally, to be honest about it. Thanks to Franz, many Jehovah's Witnesses were awakened from the slumber and from the brainwashing. Maybe, just maybe, one of these days, that talk that Jackson presented in the October 2020 JW broadcast will sink in and resonate with him. I will not hold my breath 
but I will hold out the hope because not even Jeffrey Jackson is beyond the redemption of my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. So, ladies and gentlemen, pray for him. Another Raymond Franz could be in the making. Will it be Jackson, Lett, Morris, Sanderson, Heard, Cook, Lush, or Splain? Or will Jackson's sermon ever remain for all of them? Just empty words, meant for the rank and file, but not the governing body? Apparently, they are not to pray and resist temptation, to lie to 8.5 million Jehovah's Witnesses over and over again until the spikes in their consciences have been rubbed down to uselessness. What am I talking about? It has been taught that the conscience is like a wheel in your brain with spikes on it. Each time you sin, they say the spikes prick you. But the more you continue to sin, the duller the spikes get until you no longer understand what guilt feels like. Is it all over for these men? Is there hope for them? There is hope. I do remember my Lord once asking Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? Even the conscience dead men on the governing body can have a spiritual resurrection. What a beautiful day that would be. Such is the power of the Lord, but only to those who desire it. But whatever happens, I will continue to do my part, that of the Lord I can be used to help another Jehovah's Witness to wake up. You can help by pressing that like button, which will help this video to go to another Jehovah's Witness. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you will be notified when the videos, when new videos are released. As usual, thanks for watching and have yourself a wonderful day, a wonderful night or a wonderful weekend, depending on when you are watching this video. Love you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you.